Welcome to NASCAR Countdown to Green, presented by Sonic, as we get ready to go racing. Chase Elliott's going to win at the Monster Mile. Welcome to Kansas Elimination Sunday. In the words of a driver who went to bed last night, not knowing if his hopes for a title end today, this is what gets your blood flowing. This is what gets you excited. This is what we live for as race car drivers. A phenomenal scene down below. Let's head upstairs. Two of the gentlemen who are getting ready to call this race, crew chief Steve Letart and driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. And by the way, guys, those words were Clint Boyer. That was uh, Clint Boyer who said that. I think he summed it up nicely. Absolutely, because this is the elimination race. We're going to talk all day about points and the standings. Eric Amarola, Chase Elliott, they've won. They've advanced. Kevin Harvick, you look, all these guys on the left-hand side, they're pretty decent when it comes to points. But this bubble, we're going to talk a lot about the bubble and the drivers. And I think the first thing we should look at are the two just below the bubble, Brad Kozlowski and Ryan Blaney. Yeah, Brad Kozlowski has been in this situation before. Back in 2014, he needed a win at Dega, and he got the job done. I'm going to be watching him all day long. He's going to be really aggressive. You know his pit strategy on pit road is going to be aggressive. going to be fun to keep up with Brad. Yeah, with, and with 27 career wins, there's no doubt he knows how to go to victory lane. And while with only two career wins, maybe Ryan Laney doesn't jump out as a dominant force. But when you look at his numbers at Kansas, they are impressive. He has never finished a stage outside the top 10. He's led over 145 laps, so he knows how to run up front. And think about this. The last elimination race, the Roval, the chaos of the Roval, who won? But Ryan Blaney, why is this important? Well, when you look at the guys just above the cut line, it's Clint Boyer who that quote came from, which was great, and Martin Truex Jr. And I think the point is nobody wants to be just above because a new winner and you're eliminated. Absolutely. I think Martin Truex Jr. has a great record at Kansas. But Clint Boyer, look at here, one top 10 in the last 10 Kansas races. And that guy's got to be a little bit nervous today. He's starting outside the top 10, so he's got a chance to not get some stage points in that first round unless he can advance quickly through the field. And Chris and Martin Trex Jr., he's one of those big three drivers we've talked about all year long. He's won two of the last three here. And from what I've seen in practice, it's going to be Truex, Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick as the three most dominant cars. Mm, the big three rise again. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, up there crunching the numbers, getting ready to call the race. And these fans are ready, too. We know the teams, the drivers cannot wait to get this race started. We'll be back with more here on pre-race coverage from Kansas Speedway Elimination Sunday. The NASCAR playoffs are coming to Martinsville Speedway for the first Data 500 to kick off the round of eight next week and the chance to win the grandfather clock. So grab your family and friends for a three-day weekend of action and excitement. Visit NASCAR.com slash tickets to purchase your tickets today. I think by show 1000, we're starting to figure out what we're doing here on NASCAR America. So you, you <laughs> if I pick that right, that might be the only thing I've picked right uh, since we started this. So Kyle got kicked out of my <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Thousand I Show. Up here. Let's show the driver's watch. Okay. I'm going to put us all in this group. We are all old. <laughs> We're trying not to get fired today. Marty and Kyle, I don't know if they're going to help us out. Where are you guys? We stopped here because they had a bar, to be honest with you. I remember when I went over there to drive for you guys, I was thinking, I'm going to finally have a shot at winning at Martinsville, but I forgot that you were good there, too. <laughs> I got a parking pass. That's a yeah. big deal oh, when that airhead. I'm going to go there, too. You know, I'm, you're going? I'm going. Oh, I bet my, I bet I parked behind him. <laughs> 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 that was a pretty funny moment uh, from Clint Boyer, but he wasn't done there. Uh, something else he did for us uh, was get us ready for that Sunday night football. Check it out. Hey, yeah. go ahead and do us a favor. Will you read the promo? Yes, are so you night ready? Football? I'm going to give it a try. Sunday night football is coming to Kansas City, baby. Showtime. Patrick Mahomes and my Chiefs host Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals at Arrowhead. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern with football night in America. Kickoffs at 8 20, only on NBC. And you can bet your butt I'm going to be there. Awesome. But he thinks he has a worse parking spot than Dale Jr. Oh, I don't think he does. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. What a great day it is to be a sports fan in Kansas City. Uh, the guys in the booth, including Dale Earnhardt Jr., are heading to Arrowhead after today's race. Yep, they're heading right there. Yesterday, Sunday Night Football's Michelle Tafoya stepped off that field and into Jeff Burton's NBC Toyota Camry. 
Well, Michelle DeFoy, it's great having you here. Uh, great weekend for us at NBC. We got the race on Sunday. We got the football game on Sunday. This gives us a chance to show you what being in a race car is like. We're going to go in about 185 right now. Wow. You see how wide the racetrack is? Pretty smooth, not rough. This is crazy. They say Tyreek Hill is fast. Right up against the wall. Whoa, whoa. These turns, well, this is not my favorite part of the turns. They make you a little nauseous. But the vibration is amazing to be going this fast. And my body can feel the vibration of the car, but I'm not moving at all. I'm so secure in the seat. I can't believe my life is in your hands right now. Oh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. They just told me all It sounds like she had a lot of fun. Yeah, I think she had a great time. I, but I, I don't think from where she was sitting, this racetrack nearly as wide as Jeff Burton was explaining it. <laughs> no, he was right up next to the wall using every bit. But I'm going to say this. That's what Dale and I say every week. Krista, our life is in your hands. I know. <laughs> I'm not as confident as Jeff was. <laughs> and you're going to see more of Michelle's ride tonight on Sunday Night Football. It'll be a part of their broadcast. And our apologies to our finance department at NBC. Every employee expense that comes in this week, I just realized, it's going to come from Kansas City since two entire crews yes, yeah. true, are true. in town. Uh, before the kickoff, though, it's the kickout. Four drivers will be eliminated today here in Kansas. We can't wait for this race to begin. You see the countdown clock ticking down. Countdown to Green is brought to you by Sonic. This is how you Sonic. Countdown to Green is brought to you by Sonic. This is how you Sonic. And let's see what's on the menu presented by Sonic. For four drivers, these moments right now are the fleeting few before their title hopes are gone because four more drivers will be eliminated today. But two playoff drivers are safe with wins in the last two weeks. Chase Elliott and Eric Almarola. They know they're on to the next round. And a victory is the only guarantee to advance in the playoffs. Joey Logano knows this. He's on the pole for today's race. Logano is currently 39 points above the cut line. He's won the playoff race at Kansas on two previous occasions and finished third here in the spring. As you take a look at the playoff leaderboard, let's hear from Logano, who's with Dave Burns. And doesn't it make it interesting, Krista? 39 points above, but he's not locked in. Pole position, but there's 267 laps to run. So how do you race today? Uh, good question. Uh, I, I think really for us, I think it's important to score some stage points in the beginning of this thing. If we can score some some more points and get a little bit bigger cushion, because yeah, you, call, you say 39 points, but uh, it's really 21 points in my eyes. Because if one of those four uh, that are outside the top eight right now win, uh, it's 21 points over to 78. So I think that's really the the number that we we're paying attention to a little bit more. So um, yeah, we try to score as many points as possible. If we can do that, then I think we can really open it up at the end and, and go for the win. So. So um, ultimately, we want to win the race no matter what. But uh, we also ultimately want to win the championship. And we got to keep ourselves alive to do that. So got a great starting spot. Got a great pit stall. Got a great team today. Uh, got a pretty good car as well. And uh, we'll push hard to do the best we can and get the most out of it. Appreciate the new math. Over to Parker. And Dave, it's Clint Boyer's home race. He had a big cheer from the crowd when you got introduced there. But this has not been one of your best tracks. You're 21 points to the good. What's the attack plan here? Start with a positive. And then yeah, I thought it just, you know, figure out a way. Man, uh, you know, obviously, it's so much fun to come back here at home, first and foremost. It always feels good to be home and be able to race in front of the hometown crowd. People that you grew up racing with helped you become the racer that you are. Uh, you know, family and friends, everybody that's here, there's always always important and special, a lot of pressure that comes on that, but most of it from within. But to be able to race, you know, be able to be here racing for something again, um, being a talk, you know, part of the talk of the of the uh, championship and, and all that, um, our four Stuart Haas cars are phenomenal, coming off of two great Great races. I'm obviously Dover didn't finish the way it should have, but it was you know we ran one two three four there last week was unbelievable running one two three four. Just very very um, you know proud and, and happy to be in these Stuart Haas cars. That army behind all four of these cars is doing a phenomenal job. Be able to come back here in farm country, you know, with a new partner on board with DeKalb and uh, Asgro and everything that's on board of this thing. I mean, all the farmers that are about here been out here today. It's just been phenomenal to see that and interact with them and hang out. Um, just got to take care of business. You know, I got to go out there and 
and uh, to manage our situation, do the things we do. If we can, if we can compete and race today um, the way we're capable of doing it, we'll we'll do just that. Uh, I love what I see in the next round. Those tracks are very very good for me. I know I got to take care of business today. I really do. This is the this is the race that's going to make or break you know the rest of our season. I really believe that. And Chris, so this team told me just like he said, if they can make it that next round, watch out to set a great track for them. Yeah, absolutely, Parker. And he sounds so pressure packed the way he just said that, Kyle. But he's kind of the the driver who lives. There's his son Cash, by the way, <laughs> sport his Kansas City Chiefs hat. A little Cash Boyer, but he lives for that kind of pressure, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He and, and you know what? He thrives in that pressure. He enjoys it. And, and you heard him there. He answered. He answered that question. Talks about the past the present the future he's talking about everything all at one time but that's why he is he's focused on what he's ready to do yeah when we heard both these drivers that methodical word comes back that's yes. what they have to be inside the top 10 getting stage points makes their life a lot easier i think the thing that's on boyer's side i'm going to throw out all the numbers that this isn't a great place for him because kyle you pointed this out all weekend Stuart haas has been phenomenal yes. since they started these playoffs and, and i think they will be again today and here's something we've seen ties before we saw them in the last round his second place finish last week at Talladega could be the difference. Yep. It comes down to that. So who gets eliminated today, guys? I think we have the same picks. Yep, we got the same you thing. You agree? Go. Nobody's moving in. I, I just don't see that it's happening. Even though uh, Joy brought up a good point, they're kind of racing for seventh in case one of these guys does it. But I think things stay status quo. Yeah, I, I, I do too. I think that these guys, a Kevin Harvick, a Kyle Busch, those guys are racing today to eliminate Brad Keselowski. Ooh. And they want to keep him out. They know he's dangerous. All right. Well, six other drivers will join Eric Almarola and Chase Elliott. But some big names, including former champions, are in dangerous territory. Elimination Sunday is about to begin. It is Super Sports Sunday on NBC, and it starts right here at Kansas Speedway. Elimination, that's a word you are going to hear quite a bit today because 12 drivers start the race with an opportunity for their championship hopes to continue, but when the checkered flag flies, four will have that championship hope dashed. Alongside the mayor, Jeff Burton, I'm Rick Allen. And two drivers are going to start this race in a must-win situation. You have Alex Bowman and Kyle Larson. They are the bottom of the list of 12. They've got to win if they want to advance. Yeah, so remember, if you win in the playoffs, you move on to the next round with a chance to win the championship. But guess what? Alex Bowman, he's never won a race. Yep. And if he's going to win today, he's going to have to probably beat the big three. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., by the way, Rick, they've won 13 of the last 14 mile and a half racetracks. And to get by them, they also have to contest with a very difficult racetrack. It's it's easy to get caught up in an accident here. Yeah, it really is. We've seen wrecks here in the past, and some of these wrecks are in the playoffs. And not only do we see wrecks, we see big wrecks. This wreck right here, Danica Patrick, Joey Logano, and then here comes Eric Amarola. This is a wreck that hurt Eric Amarola, actually broke his back. Had to come back from that. See last year, you see right here, Eric Jones getting away from it. And again, in May, another big wreck. So this is a mile and a half, but it's not like every other mile and a half on the circuit. Well, and obviously a lot of the drivers are, all, are in a situation where they're on the bubble. And that championship bubble is going to be tough to get off of. So let's hear more about that with Steve Letart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, Rick, you can't have an elimination without a cut line. And when we look at the four drivers, two above, two below, two really jump out. The Team Penske drivers are Brad Keselowski and Ryan Blaney. I'm not sure it's a must win, but if they need to, I think either can win. Yeah, Brad Kozlowski definitely can win. He's going to be aggressive today. He won the last mile and a half at Vegas. Yeah, in the last elimination race we had, Ryan Blaney went to victory lane. When you look at the two just above the cut line, it's Clint Boyer and Martin Truex. Boyer has his work cut out for him. When you look at Martin Truex's numbers here, he's won two of the last three races. Oh, in that third race, that was a second place finish. Yeah, Boyer with one top ten finish in the last ten Kansas races. He's also starting outside the top ten, so that first round, or that first stage, is a great opportunity for Brad and Blaney to get points on Boyer. Yeah, the big three have been fast all weekend, but the cut line will be our focus in this elimination race, Rick. And Clint Boyer is at home. He's a Kansas native. Let's get things underway. We go trackside for pre-race ceremonies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise and remove your hats as the Overland Park Police Department Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as the 509th Bomb Wing Chaplain Graham Bailey offers today's invocation. Faithful God, we are fired up for a great race today. We give you thanks for fast cars and freedom. We give you thanks for the brave women and men who defend our freedom, and we pray for their safety. We give you thanks also for the courageous drivers and pit crew members who run their race today. We pray for their safety. And for all of us who run our race of life, may we run with courage, 
confidence, clarity, and the inspiration that we take from this track today and your abundant love. Be with us now and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Here to honor America with the performance of our national anthem, please welcome from Kansas City, Kansas Police Department, Master Detective Dana Vaughn. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming climbing into their cars now and for quite a few those that are on the bubble they are fighting for every point and the possibility to get that win that will advance them in to the round of eight.